What's up, guys? It's Compton EMT here with the Mead Hall, our preview for the Amazeballs tournament. You know, as with me so many times, I do have Raven here. You guys can see him right below me. What's up, Raven? Hey, how's it going, everybody? I'm doing pretty good. All right. So, yeah, Raven. Um, I mean, what, what do you want to talk about? You want to talk about the patch notes first? Yeah, actually, the patch is kind of ridiculous especially seeing as it landed the day right before the tournament <laughs> and yeah. there's some pretty significant stuff that changed in it so it might actually be a good idea to go over that for everybody especially if they haven't been practicing like crazy the way me and misfit i have since it dropped this morning yeah definitely and if you guys you know if after this show you want to go ahead and retouch on these patch notes maybe have somebody explain it to you you can definitely come to the export of this video or raven over on his youtube channel does a nice little patch notes kind of explaining things and showing them on on the actual video as well hasn't been made yet but i do plan to get one out some point in the near future yeah pro probably after tomorrow right since you're kind of focused <laughs> in on this tournament uh yeah just a bit <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, in our patch notes, um, we do have a couple of uh, community requests. And actually, this patch came in multiple, uh, excuse me, multiple, you know, standouts here. So, the 5.2 patch, if I can get it to come up. My internet's being slow. But we did see a lot of balance changes with weapons. So, Raven, what's the most notable stuff you saw out of the... Uh, out of the patch notes. Swords got nerfed to shit. <laughs> All right. So swords used to be the only weapon with hit confirms in the game. And they basically got their ability to confirm into air recover moves and to chain into combos after air light pretty much removed. Um, they did tweak it again with the 0.53 release, which they basically like they released 5.2 at around like 11 o'clock today and then um, they released 5.3 around 3 or 4 o'clock or something like that after a bunch of quick mm -hmm. feedback from a lot of people um, but yeah the uh, yeah sword got nerfed pretty hard 
like yeah. really hard. Um, it, it sounded like they did over nerf it maybe a little bit, but they did come back and bring a little bit of that back there with the update with the 1.5.3 patch. So on the yeah. point two patch, um, we did see with the community request that uh, the hitboxes now use capsule collisions instead of rectangles for improved accuracy. So what what does that kind of mean to us, Raven? It means that we're all going to have to relearn hitboxes because they've all just changed. <laughs> so um, you, do you think the dive kick and maybe the uh, the Qatar down and up are affected by this a lot? Not that much. It hasn't been too noticeable, um, at least in the, the play that I've had today. Um, it's Still, it seemed to have affected the sword the most because um, the sword had great hitboxes at close range before and... Now those are much smaller due to them being oval shaped. Um, one of the things I will say that they did improve though is uh, some of the um, some of the mechanics on the hammer. The hammer standing neutral is a lot easier to hit with, um, which makes for a much nicer game. So, yeah. yeah I, I also noticed down there too that the down reduced time to hit. So that little stomp. There's a reduced time to hit, and the stun time has been increased. Have you tried that out yet at all? Are we? Are you? Are we talking? Oh, about the hammer? Yes. Yeah. The the stomp seems to hit a little bit more often now, um, but I haven't. And then the the neutral is is a lot more consistent with it actually continuing to to hit all three hits after the initial one. Mm -hmm. um, so I do like those changes. I think it makes the hammer a lot more viable. Yeah, definitely. And I I love the hammer. I mean, you know me. I'm a Nash main. I'm a Ganash main, which I Ganache. always call Thatch for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> I always make that mistake, but uh, but yeah, hammers for a long time have been kind of the not so hot weapon in one v one. Yeah, it's I mean mainly just because it's everything comes out really slow and it's really easy to punish. Um, the the air tilt like air tilts are kind of one of the most commonly used moves in competitive, and without having a useful air tilt like you're just gimped so like using the hammer in the air ends up being a lot more complicated i've been trying to put more time in with the hammer but just hasn't been uh still isn't quite doing it for me <laughs> yeah yeah you like those faster weapons but uh but yeah like you mentioned um in the chat as the intro video was going on throwing did get a nerf as well so in the yeah. gameplay changes we do have um one thing that I was asking for specifically, the attacking out of dodge, is it's slightly longer because you know, I was getting annoyed with people dodging and immediately coming back with a sword attack. But uh, as far as the throws go, it does look like uh, the force on all weapons has been normalized. Uh, yeah. Spear is slightly faster than the rest. By normalized, they basically mean got cut in half. Yes. So, like, the, the top end speed that we used to see from, like, the spear, for example, where you could just hurl it across the stage, at full speed it goes maybe half a screen's distance now. So you can no longer rely on it to knock people out of the air. Um, additionally, the hitboxes are basically dead after it comes into contact with the ground. So you can't do any more crazy stuff like Misfit was doing for a long time where you're bouncing the weapon off the ground at an angle and making it impossible to dodge. Um... So basically, like, in my opinion on this patch is a lot of the stuff they changed, they changed in, um, in response to, um, 1v1. Like, I feel like this was the first patch where they really started looking at the stuff people were doing 1v1 and making adjustments based on it. Um, after 5.3, it seems to play pretty good. Um, and I'm interested to see how the the meta is going to evolve after all of these changes. It, just in the matches I was playing tonight, I noticed people were throwing a lot less often. It wasn't as difficult to uh, to dodge out of some things. But I think that the biggest standing thing with 1v1 right now that they haven't addressed is how completely overpowered blades are at the moment. Yeah, and they actually did a couple of changes when they made that second pass with the point three patch. So they did take down a little bit of the force and things like that, which we'll get to in a second. But uh, I'm going to throw up a poll right now. I know a lot of people have been concerned about the sword, so I just kind of wanted to get a poll of the people that are in the chat right now. It looks like we do have a few people. But uh, basically, it's going to be about the sword. What do you think? Is it ruined? 
it's gonna be underpowered, still overpowered, or just right, like a bowl of mush. So yeah, that is starting now. You can go ahead and, you know, go ahead and vote on that. But uh, we'll jump on over to the point three notes as boom point three notes right here so you were talking about the guitars it looks like the guitar side slightly increased time to hit so that's that quick little dive roll i i used to use that a lot when i would play sentinel he was kind of my second main I and mean, it's one of those things that would come out really quick it lowered your your hurt box and just kind of set you up for say the neutral attack where you can knock somebody up in the air and finish a combo but uh, yeah, I, have you seen how much slower it comes out? I, mean, I I haven't seen a lot of it. I I think the the problem with with the guitars as they stand right now isn't with any one particular move. It's with the fact that you can get hit if somebody continues to spam attack through your dodge. Mm -hmm. So if you try to dodge through someone, all they need to do is keep pressing X, and they'll yeah. hit you. And, you know, whether it's in the air with the air neutral, whether it's in the ground with the rolls, um, I haven't seen that change. Like, right now, the only real defense against blades is just not to get in range. Yeah. Um, and it's something that's been particularly frustrating lately with the popularity of Lucian. So, I don't know. I'm not sure if this completely fixes it, but I know the devs are keeping a close eye on this stuff, and there will probably be more tweaks and balances as we go on. Mm -hmm. um, so it's nice that they're addressing some of the things, um, but you know we'll just have to see what they continue to do in the future. Yeah, definitely. So jumping back up to the community requests now, it, they did go ahead and make hit boxes stick around for four frames, so it's easier to see some of those really quick hit boxes that come out. I know that you know I would take it and slow down the film and actually catch that one frame that a hit box would pop up. But uh, now it's gonna, every hitbox is going to stay for at least four frames. I know you don't use the training mode a lot, but I mean, is that going to help you? Are you going to start using it now to kind of see when things are coming out and how they're coming out? I mean, I, I hopped in it earlier today just to take a look at the new capsule hitboxes. And I mean, it's something where it's, it's useful, but the thing is, is that even with the visual cue, the way that the hitboxes interact with other moves is really what interests me. I don't really care what they look like if I'm not hitting anything. Um, you know, ultimately, it's it's about being able to see what kind of moves those hitboxes beat. So until they actually add into the AI something where I can tell the the, the training dummy to spam unarmed dive kick over and over again, so I can find <laughs> something that beats it. You know, it's training mode has limited use right now. Yeah, definitely. And if, if they put more feature into it like that, uh, it's definitely going to be a lot more useful. I know my suggestion to them, which kind of led them to this four frame thing, was to put in a feature where you could slow things down to half speed. So, I mean, training could be a lot better than it is, but it is still useful. And, yeah, if you guys out there have any uh, any sort of suggestions for the training mode. I know a lot of people call me a theory crafter even though I do test my stuff out and how it works. But uh, if you have any ideas for the training mode, go ahead and get them up on the discussions. Let the devs know. And they, they weren't even planning to do this four frames thing until literally right before they are gonna release the 5.3 patch. So they'll definitely get things in when they can, as quickly as they can. So as far as the rest of the patch notes, it, for uh, 5.3, it does look like they did change some art. They did change a couple more hitboxes. One of the ones I'm very interested in is the Lance Down, adjusted hitbox on Lance Down. So Lance Down is the one where you turn your, uh, your lance out and burn them with the bottom of it. And one thing I noticed about that one is you actually jump back a little bit when you do that. So someone who's standing behind you, you could actually hit with that move. So um, I'm curious to see, I haven't jumped in the game since this patch yet, since I did just get home from work, eat some dinner, but I'm curious to see you know, where that hitbox lands and if you can still hit somebody from behind you. Because you know, Raven told me to play with King Roland, so I was. And one of my go-to's with the lance was when somebody would dodge behind me, I wouldn't turn, I wouldn't do anything, I'd just hit down light. They'd come out of their dodge, they'd be stunned, it would move them forward, I'd pull a second one out, they'd remain stunned, and then I would either do a, you know, a 
heavy attack, or I would just do the quick lance out. Have you seen the lance yet, Raven? I haven't played with it much today, um, and that move is actually something that I don't really have much of <laughs> in my arsenal. That's much yeah. more of a scrying thing. Um, but he's not even. But the thing is, is that this is um, in 1.4 was when the lance got nerfed pretty hard. Um, mm -hmm. And so, like, I'm not really sure if it, if adjusting the hitbox on it is a further nerf or not, but it's kind of lost interest from a lot of the community ever since that happened. I know the people who were maining uh, Lance characters kind of started looking for other mains after that. Yeah, and I think the general kind of consensus from the community on that is maybe the flame roll was a little bit overpowered and it actually brought it in line. But I mean, it, do you see a lot of people kind of using Lance at this point in the game? Not recently, but then the the pool of people that I've been playing against is kind of limited. You know, I, yeah. I play Misfit quite a bit. I played Kreuzberg again tonight. Um, now Misfit's been playing with Roland a lot frequently. Um, yeah, definitely after but, that win in the last tournament, he better be. Yeah, that down that, that down heavy is. Uh, or that down light attack with the lance is one that we don't see too often, just because it's super situational, um, and not quite as useful as some of the other lance moves. I think you moves. should start using it on Misfit when you play him. I mean, he, he, you know, you just stand on his right, he dodges right like he always does, and then you sit down light and stun him, right? <laughs> that, oh. that seems like a way to beat him, right? The problem with it is that it's um, it has really long active frames, and that's mainly why I don't use it, because if you miss, you're stuck in that animation yeah. for so long, it's really easy to get hit out of it. Yeah. So, yeah, as far as patch notes go, I mean, you know, a couple of uh, balance changes, a couple of balance changes, a little bit of air quotes there. But, uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and end this poll right now. It's been running for almost seven minutes. It does look like just right, like a bowl of mush, wins out in a 75% uh, fashion. So... Nice. Yeah, I mean, apparently most of the people watching believe that it is, you know, it's just perfectly fine at this point. Eh. Oh, who knows? Oh, we'll see how it goes. Because it's the question, like, you know, the with the sword being nerfed, that hurts pretty much all the characters that I've played. You mm -hmm. know, it's, uh, I mean, I play Hitori, King Roland, and Bodvar. That's all sword wielding characters. Like sword was my favorite weapon because of the hit confirm. Now that it's gone, you know, it's it it begs the question of whether or not those characters are going to be viable. And I guess tomorrow we're going to be able to to see whether that plays out or not. Yeah, definitely. So you, with that change, are you still planning to go a heavy Roland? I don't know. I mean, I've been I've been working with some other characters, and honestly, I think that it's. It's challenging to have to like try to figure out like a new method for this, and then not also like seeing how drastically that's going to change other people's play. I mean, probably I'll end up sticking with Roland and Hattori, but you know, at this point with a brand new patch right before the tournament, basically anything could happen. Yeah, and you know what? I just see a legit Punisher there in the chat saying he's going to stick with the Lance right now. So if you want some practice against the Lance, I guess go play him. I, I know you were wanting to get some practice against the Blades, so you are playing, what was that, Kreutzberg the other night, and he was mopping up the floor with you? Yeah, uh, last night he was winning. I think I haven't figured out, though, because I beat him three times in a row today. So nice. I think so I've got him figured out. Same thing with Scroyan. Scroyan dodges a little bit more. Kreutzberg just doesn't dodge. That's all you need to know to beat him. He just yeah. doesn't dodge. So, yeah. Um, as far as tournaments go, you know, this is going to be our first big tournament as we're kind of moving away from those patch notes now. But this is going to be our first big tournament. It is entitled... Oh, Kitty on the screen. Kitty on the screen. Yeah. She's here. If everybody's wondering what the hell is going on and why I keep looking down. <laughs> I just thought you were, you know, being... You know, being, being weird, horrible, and gross <laughs> on stream, but a horrible person. Yes, but uh, as far as it goes, this this tournament is called Pound because I don't like saying hashtag a mace balls attack. If you didn't know, those little spike balls that you see, their actual proper name is a mace ball. So 
that's where we get our tag for this. But, you know, before we get into the Amaze Balls Attack tournament, we just kind of want to go over a review of kind of the mini tournaments that have happened so far. So we've had three. Is that right, Raven? Yeah. Yep. It's been three thus far. So how, how many of those have you played in? What kind of experience have you gotten from those? Well, I played in two of the three. The last one I helped co-commentate. Um, and essentially the first one I think was an eight man. The second one we had 16. Um, and we also had 16 in the most recent one, which was last weekend. And the experiences have been pretty good. I mean, it's been really difficult to kind of balance tournament stress with expectations and you know capabilities and all that kind of thing but tournaments have been really fun everybody's been super cool um we've had a big mixture of people show up each time and they've been just really fun to play in awesome awesome you did say you sat out that third one correct yep yeah you were on stream casting with me Indeed. gave me a little bit of backup while i had to do all the back end work as well but yep. uh yeah, so right here, you know, this is what we use. We don't use Challenge. We don't use Battlefy for the simple fact that we do something interesting with our seating. So with our seating, we give you guys a pre-tournament seating. Once you, we have that seating, we go ahead and snake you guys into some free-for-all games, and then we let you guys figure out the actual bracket seating. Problem with Challenge and Battlefy and all of them is they have no way of doing kind of like a four player game, you know, four separate team games. So we've come to the Stone Age in using a spreadsheet. I, I know Raven always laughs at this. It's terrible, man. <laughs> but yeah. Spreadsheets it, are for work, damn it. Oh, but this is work. Ugh. This is like my second job. That's how I'm treating it. Oh. So yeah, in uh, in our very first tournament, it was kind of a pickup uh, tournament. We did see Raven move on to the finals against some type of, you know, just horrible player in the finals and absolutely decimate him, uh, only dropping three of his stocks. You know, we told overall we saw Raven. Hax, Ultane, Scroyan, Francis Compton, myself, Ninja Fans, and Misfit. Misfit actually went out in the quarterfinals and has gone pretty far in the following tournaments, wouldn't you say? Yeah, didn't he win the last one? He won the last one, right? Did he? Did he? I, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. I just remember a lot of salt going down on Brawlhaven. There was a lot of salt. There was a lot of salt. But yeah. They need, they need to make like an ocean stage for all the salt. That yes. Was tossed. It's like an underwater background with sea creatures. Holy crap, cat. All right, you need to go. Get out of here. Yes. All right. So the uh, the second tournament we did, it, uh, it was kind of interesting. We were originally going to do a lottery, but we ended up not doing a lottery. But uh, as you can see, we had 14 total players that showed up. I know you said 16 earlier. But, uh, yeah, we had a total sign-up of 26 with 14 people that actually showed. We had our free-for-all rounds right here that you can see. And then we had our bracket. And once again, the boss, Raven, who's right below me, went on and actually won that one. He beat Picklesore in the finals. So Scroyan and Draven actually played after that, Scroyan taking that third-place spot. But, uh... But yeah, that was definitely a fun tournament. Um, I know you dropped a game to Scroyan in the semifinals. Um, I know you've had a couple of comments on that, but any comment tonight? I don't know. I mean, I think I would much rather drop one game and win. Um, I know after that, I like came back pretty hard. And the way that I tend to play is, you know, and why I've been trying to make sure I put in some time against Scroyan and Kreutzberg. Uh, before the tournament is just so that I can figure people out. Mm -hmm. Once I figure somebody out, then it's not hard. Yeah, you know, but it's it was a matter of uh, kind of being taken by surprise. And one of the things I've noticed with playing against the guys from Brazil is that um, you have to play a little differently to account for the lag mm -hmm. um, because the server does not like <laughs> close calls. No, no it, it wants doesn't. you. It wants you to win outright. Because between deciding if they got hit or if they dodged, it will let them dodge through stuff every time. It's just the way the net code works. So you got to play more aggressively, a little bit more safely, all at the same time. Use more spacing and weapon distance to your advantage, and 
Now that I've kind of absorbed that information, I'm ready to put that into play next time instead of dropping around. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, yeah, our third tournament, which you did not participate in, we actually ended up having a total of 15... Or How many did we have actually playing? A lot. Yeah. It was a lot. We only had 12 actually playing, so... We had a sign-up of 15, we had a real short, quick sign-up of 15, and those players were actually thrown three people into a free-for-all game, so we saw our first three-person free-for-all game, so I mean, yeah, it's interesting, but I know some people, <coughs> this fit, like to go sit off on the uh, ledges while the other two people fight. <laughs> uh, so, you know, that's how some people like to strategize. Mm -hmm. I hope he's actually in here listening to how much shit we're talking about him. Oh. I told him to, to come in here. If he's not here, I don't, kid he a... might be a viewer that is not viewing us. We do have eight total viewers. Thank you guys. Uh, over on Hitbox, it looks like Young Grill, a uh, player that I actually met today, kind of just trolling along through the uh, different streams that came up throughout the day. Um, Young Grill actually saying hi over in that chat. So. Yeah, definitely a good group of players coming through, but uh, as getting back to kind of the previous mini tournaments, so this third mini tournament, uh, we did see that Misfit actually got the second seed to Fearless. I mean, before this tournament, did you know Fearless? Is there Had you played against him before? No, not much, but I've played against him uh, since, actually. Yeah, and did he rightfully kind of deserve maybe that number one spot over Misfit, or is he just more of a free-for-all style player? No, I think his 1v1 chops are really good. I think that he just didn't have uh, the experience that he needed to be able to um, tackle some of the best players. Um, you know, Misfit is doing 1v1 all the time. I don't think he plays anything else. Um, and I know Scroyan does 1v1 all the time as well. Like, the people who tend to get to the, to the top three... Uh, deserve to be there because they put in the time. Yeah, definitely, definitely. But yeah, I mean, Fearless did lose to Kreutzberg, the number four seed in the semis. And uh, Misfit versus Kreutzberg was a very interesting kind of championship game that we had. This was actually last weekend because yeah. Kreutz won the first one. And then Misfit changed up his character choice from Hattori to King Roland to kind of counteract... Uh, the Lucian that uh, Kreutzberg mm -hmm. was bringing and then won two straight out games. The interesting part is, I mean, what what happened on that third game, Raven? Well, I mean, I think that the, the Roland pick to counter Lucian was really smart because Roland's armor negates a lot of the, you know, uh, a lot of the damage that Lucian does just because Lucian has really low attack damage. So, even though the blades do a lot of damage in themselves, like King Roland's just able to absorb a lot of punishments. And at that point, it really becomes like this game of attrition, like who is going to make the most mistakes? And over time, it was it was Lucian. And, you know, picking Roland is a character that lets you take more punishment, make more mistakes. And you almost kind of have to do it against somebody who plays um, in the style that, that Kreutzberg does. So... I think it was a really good choice, and I think it worked out really well for Misfit in the end. Yeah, but what I was really asking was, how did the third game end? Are you like trying to like make me remember that? Yes, like, specifically? I am. I yes. don't know. Misfit so, won, and, and then people cheered. It, Misfit won, and people <laughs> cheered. Yes, that's um, what I did. <laughs> the game actually timed out. Oh yeah, now I remember. See, that's all you had to say. You just had to like peek my memory. It did time out. But Misfit was up like by a I'm whole done. life, so I'm you know. Done. No, dude, fine. <laughs> Be that way. Look, <laughs> I have a cat. I win the internet, see? Because I have a cat. My cat that I have that's sitting over there is black. It's a black What's cat. What's that supposed to mean? What what black is that? Black cats are awesome, man. What is this is fucking racist, dude. It's just fucking racist. I love my black cat. She's right. awesome. Her name is Princess because my, love... my wife named her. But yeah. <sighs> so <laughs> I, I digress. We digress. Let's move on to talking about tomorrow's tournament. And as you can see, we haven't filled in the player slots yet because we don't know who's going to show up tomorrow. 
So if you actually signed up for this tournament, we need you to show up tomorrow. The actual check-in period is going to start at 11.30 a.m. Pacific, 1.30 p.m. Central. See what I'm doing there? I'm going with the old, uh, the old TV thing, you know, 7.30 Pacific, 1.30 Central. See, in Central time, it's always like 9 Eastern, 8 Central. Yeah. But, you know, it's cool. If, any, if, if all things work out, I'll live in California soon, and I'll have to deal with all that. Yeah, definitely. And then you can come uh, hang out with me, and we can play Brawlhalla from my couch. Wicked. Yeah. But, yeah, um, now we scroll down, you can see we have a lot of, especially that first guy who signed up right when the thread went up. I mean, he, was, he must have been sitting there with no life, just waiting to sign up for this tournament. No, it's actually like people don't leave him alone on Steam and he just keeps getting messages all the time. <laughs> like, my phone, it explodes constantly. I need to uninstall this Steam chat app. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I only turned mine on today for the first time in months because I was smoking and I wanted to message you to let you know I was about what? ready to get up here and get ready. Uh-huh. So, yeah, uh, scrolling down the list, we have several awesome players that we see, but... I can tell you that we have 41 total signups for this first large tournament we're doing. So, in fact, let me go ahead and let's see if we've gotten any more here. It looks like we might have gotten another one. Scroll oh, down. sweet. Is it PG Not? I told PG Not to sign up. No, it's Rockefellerception. Yeah, that's PG Not. <laughs> that's PG Not? Yeah, it was in my okay. stream earlier. Awesome. So, yeah, I mean, he signed up, uh, had him join the group. So if you guys are interested in a little bit of uh, Brawlhalla competitive community, that's the actual name of our group. So go to your actual screen name here, drop down to groups, click on it, and you can go ahead and browse groups and find the Brawlhalla competitive community. We are up to 137 members, but this is really where we do all of our organization. So jump yep. in here. You can see right now nobody has commented on it besides me, but we actually want to discuss with you guys, the competitive community, things like this, the map viability for competitive play. If you guys were paying attention to the sign-up thread, there was a little bit of uh, controversy about one of the changes we were attempting to make with the rule set. And people complained. People, people complained. complained. <laughs> so, yeah, Ra Raven was uh, on the side of the rule change, but uh, go ahead and sound off on this thread for us. This isn't going to affect tomorrow's tournament. We just kind of want to get the community's opinion on the different maps, what you guys think is comp you know competitively viable, and you know maybe the reasons why or why not you th why or why not you think that way. That doesn't sound right. That's bad English. I'm pretty sure. But yeah. Um, Definitely join the competitive community even if you aren't participating in this tournament because it's a great place to get some 1v1 matches, you know, get your uh, get your skill up so maybe you can come with a good, strong chance at winning one of these tournaments. But yeah, um, as far as it goes, like I said, 41 signups so far. Once we end this show, as soon as I hit that stop streaming, we'll go through the BRB screen that I always throw up at the end, but as soon as I hit that stop streaming button, I'm going to be posting to that sign-up thread saying, sign-up is closed. So, yeah. So, with our brackets, uh, right now, we're going to have several free-for-all games. If we actually have more than 32 people, it's going to get a little dicey, and we're going to have to switch this up a little bit. But if you guys go to the spreadsheet, it's actually listed on the sign-up thread and in the announcements and stuff for... Uh, the tournament in the competitive group, you can see where each and every one of those ranked people is going. So we have done a little bit of ranking. We have our top 11 so far. Uh, the competitive kind of moderators are getting that put together based on our knowledge of all the players. So you guys will actually know who kind of, you know, once people show up, 
who's kind of going to go where in those free-for-all games. We will let you know. We will fill it in. But uh, then we do have two separate sides of the bracket. So we have the Compton side of the bracket and the Wings side of the bracket. Wings actually uh, let me know that he might not be able to stream this tomorrow because he did get a new job. I mean, congratulations to him. He got a new job. But, hey, now I might be out of streamer. So if you guys know anybody who does competitive commentary on games and can make it tomorrow and can discuss things with me, say, at 9 a.m. Pacific time tomorrow, definitely shoot them over my info. Uh, you can catch me on Twitter. I'm at Greg R.T. Henson. Uh, if you just search, you know, the pound baseball's attack, or pound a mace balls, you'll probably see a lot of my posts show up on Twitter with that. So go ahead and send that person's information to me. Tell them to get a hold of me. And yeah, I'm looking for a second streamer right now. If we don't find one, then it's just going to be Raven throwing games up on his stream, maybe not even commentating. Because, you know. I may end up doing that, but only if I'm feeling very altruistic. And I would just like to point out that Chicago is mine. Chicago Legit Punisher, it's mine. I have the, the Intelligentsia mug to prove it, so you can uh, put that in your pocket. Um, but yeah, tomorrow is going to be really interesting. If I have to, I'll try to help out with the stream. Um, I was trying to decide if I should live stream the tournament from my perspective, or if I should um, if I should cut videos the way that I normally do. I haven't really decided yet thinking I might try to do both. <laughs> I don't know if my computer can handle that or not. Well, I'd um, say that if you... If I can't find somebody to replace Wings, you should just stream it. Might do. I might. I mean, it doesn't really make me lag. The The lag comes from playing people who have bad connections to the Brawl Hall server. Um, <laughs> so it doesn't really make me lag. In fact, I'm probably going to be streaming as soon as we end the show. I'm probably going to take 10 minutes and then go back. So if anybody who's playing tomorrow wants to get in some practice matches... Come hit me up on my stream. I pretty much will play anybody who shows up and says, hey, play me in chat. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, there's a couple of players I still need to play. I need to play you again now that, uh, you know, we're both, you know, now that I beat you a game, I need to go play you some more. I was playing Scarlet. <laughs> that doesn't count. <laughs> I was playing King Roland. Doesn't count. King Roland was, was top tier. Yeah, now that he got I, mega nerfed, he's I, King Roland is the single most nerfed character. The lance got nerfed, the sword got nerfed. You know, it, ever since they showed my Legend of King Roland video to the Blue Mammoth office, they were like, "Holy shit, this guy! Like, we can't nerf the person playing this character, so we just need to nerf the shit the out of character. Roland. We just need to nerf King Roland until he's more like Peasant Roland. Yeah, and that's what they did." Yeah, so I want to give a shout out to our people over in the Twitch chat since they're not really up on the screen as much. We do have Epidus. We have PG Not 13, RB not. and Chief 142 and Young RB. Girl. I don't know who Young Girl is. That sounds disturbing. Young Grill. Oh, Young Grill. Young Grill. But yeah, maybe it's, is young, that, young Rill's maybe also it's in the uh, in the hitbox chat is rest now. So in both chats. But yeah, those are our viewers over on the Twitch side. Thanks for watching, guys. We are here with the Mead Hall. We're planning to make this kind of maybe a bi-weekly show where we get on. Usually we'll have a dev on, but last weekend they were at uh, they're at Pack South. They're all a little tired. I know that uh, Tyveris was telling me, you know, he tried he tried to basically pull rank with people and tell them somebody needed to get on, but everybody was like, I'm going home, man. I'm going home. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. So, yeah, we're going to probably do this maybe every two weeks, and we'll, the devs have said that they will get on. It was just a little hard for them. And we'll probably have, you know, a community member on or another streamer on to kind of spotlight them as well. So you guys who stream Brawlhalla, Definitely keep watching the Mead Hall, and you might have your chance to get uh, get shown get shown off to the community. You know, we we love our streamers. I've been spending a lot of this week kind of sitting in stream chats while I've been at work talking, as Raven's dancing over there. But uh, but yeah, we we love you guys streaming. We can't do all the work, can can we, Raven? No, no. Even though you'd like to be like 
you know thousand subscriber in on YouTube. And, you know, in, in the in the event that one day I become a YouTube celebrity, we'll all look back on this moment, and the eight people in this Twitch chat will go, "I remember when that guy was just some dick." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember when, yeah. You, I will never forget when you were just some dick. <laughs> no, never. So I'm going to go ahead and end this poll as I forgot about it. It's been 20 minutes. The poll was, what mini tourney do you want to see next? The options were 1v1, 2v2, and free-for-all. So just cause so kind of the stream gets it on camera, there were our results, 1, 3, and 1. So a little bit of low voting on that, but hey. It is what it is. And the people want 2v2. Yes, they want a 2v2. So most likely after this tournament, our next tournament that we are going to stream, our next one in the mini tourney series, is I haven't come up with a better name for it. If you guys got a good name for it, let me know. Once again, Twitter at Greg R.T. Henson. But I'll probably come back with the group of players and everything probably two weeks after today. Or no three weeks after today. I'm going to take two weekends off after this weekend because I mean, I've been busy every single weekend with say my youngest daughter's birthday and with Tecmo Los Angeles things like that. Since, we don't care about your problems. Since probably what mid-December was that first tournament? Yes. December 18th I want to say. Yeah. Somewhere there. 13th. So oh. since the 13th of December, I've basically been, you know, running tournaments, doing stuff every single weekend busy, and mm. my yard shows it because my grass is like this tall right now, like this tall. I walk in your yard. That's what, I... yeah. no, I don't. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, guys, um, we will be taking a short hiatus after this tournament. Especially because we've done two in a row and this one's pretty darn big, considering the other ones were half the size. So, yeah, definitely look out for that information probably popping up a week from now. But uh, you guys are definitely the lifeblood of the tournaments. You're the players, you're the viewers, and heck, next many tournaments that come out... Let's go ahead and get some new people watching. We've got a lot of new people from PAX South, but let's get a bunch of new people watching. So, yeah, I mean, I, I'm pretty much settled and I'm done. Uh, you got anything else to say here, Raven? I would just like to say that I truly love this game and all of you people watching. You guys are the bomb. And I'm actually really interested to see what's going to happen tomorrow. Because I, I no longer feel confident in my ability to destroy <laughs> everyone. So anything could happen, and it's going to be interesting. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, we've been on air for 40 minutes. Um, I'd like to give a shout-out to the people that have been in the chat. So we got Ashes1, Dan2, Drix, Legit Punisher, Raven, you're in there too, but I can give a rat's ass about you. Hi. Uh, rest now and Weird Jacob over in our Twitch chat. Twitch. We have Epidoofs, Tuzzle Wuzzle, PG Not, Young Grill, and RB and Chief142. So thanks, guys, for coming in, watching the very first Brawl Hall of Mead Hall. But uh, I think we're pretty much uh, done here, I would yep. say. Yeah, thanks, guys, for uh, coming out. We're going to try to make these ultra extra entertaining in the future. <laughs> and again, if any of you are interested in guest starring, you know, coming on and being a third picture here somewhere, just let us know. Uh, you can follow both me and Compton on Twitter, and I'll post those in the chat box here momentarily. But yeah, thanks. Thank you so much, guys, for uh, coming out and watching. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, um, before we do leave, and Raven, I want to thank you for jumping on. Of course. You, you'll, you'll be a, a staple mainstay for this Brawl Hall of Mead Hall. But, yes. uh, but yeah, a couple of other shout outs we do want to do the Brawl Hall of Reddit. Uh, if you're not a big Redditor, or if you are, definitely check it out. Uh, a lot of information that's not really discussed on the broader scale is discussed on Reddit. And you know, we see a lot more people visiting the Steam 
you know, discussions, definitely jump in the Reddit. When people have a video, they'll post it to the Reddit. When they go live with a stream, they'll post it to the Reddit. Things like that. If you're looking for stuff going on in the community, the Reddit is a great place to go. I mean, and I'm there. Yeah. R I'm Raven's always there. Always watching it. Like, as soon as a post comes up, he, Bam. he gives it, he gives it a, a freaking, he hits that up arrow right away. He votes it up. Well, unless it's like me posting some rant about how Raven is. Yeah. I'm posting to it right now. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely, uh, Raven, if you want, go ahead and throw up a feedback thread for the Mead Hall. Since this is our first one, I've kind of, I kind of threw it together in two days, but... Uh, We'd like to get you guys' feedback on this. There is going to be a tournament feedback thread. So, yeah, check out the Brawlhalla Reddit. A couple of other things. You see it down there in the bottom right corner of your screen, HSA Films. That is my production company name. Um, going to be planning to do a lot more stuff. My New Year's resolution was to get back on YouTube and get back on streaming again so you're going to see a lot more stuff come out from hsa films additionally the cc radio you always hear me playing it here it is a creative commons radio station creative commons shoutcast you can find that at shoutcast.com or you can go ahead and download it and listen to it through various music players such as winamp it really kicks the llama's ass uh you could even listen to it through your windows media player it has did you really just quote the llama's ass yes i did that's amazing. It really whips it. That's amazing. But yeah, all of the music on the on the CC radio is of Creative Commons license BY or BYSA. So what that means is you have to attribute the actual artist. That's what BY is. So as you can see, I have that crawl at the bottom of my stream. That satisfies the BY clause of all those. The SA clause is share alike. So you have to share it under the same... Uh, the same license as you got it. So everything I do here is under a BYSA license because kind of, you know, I have to do that because of the SA clause and the music I play. But yeah, definitely check it out. Shoutcast.com. Just go ahead and type in the CC radio. You can listen to all the music here that I play on my stream and that we use for the Brawl Hall of com competitive community events. You look like you're going to say something. I'm going to be leaving now. Okay. Thank you, Raven. You um, can go. I'm going to go have a cigarette. Oh, you, nice. You want, you, want, you want to play some games tonight, man? Yeah, definitely. I'm going to shut this off, clip it, and throw it up on YouTube. But after that, definitely. All right. Well, hit me up. I'm going to be headed back over to my stream. And yeah, thanks so much for doing this, man. I really appreciate you putting all this community stuff together and all the time you're putting into it. And uh, yeah. Yeah, really the last like 10 minutes of the show is just stroking. <laughs> stroking the hand. Mm. So yeah, one, one more shout out I want to give before we go ahead and hit that BRB and close out this show is <laughs> I've completely blanked on my head in my head. Whatever, I'll get it next I time. I would like to thank the Academy. Yes, thank you. the Academy. Thank you for this opportunity. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a good night. Jump on over to Raven's stream on Twitch. It's twitch.tv slash Raven. And he has a weird beanie on. But uh, we're going to hit a transition. What transition you want to see, Raven? I know what it is. Thatch. Thatch. All right. So let's get that thatch. Guys, join us tomorrow. Games will go live at noon. If you're going to be playing, show up at 11 and check in. Peace. Right.